He's Cocky. A, he's... Sounds like somebody I know. <laughs> you. <laughs> God, listen, come on. We're having fun. All right, let's get started with, uh, you know, we love to talk about your favorite players. Bo Nix. He was in the studio in the run-up to the draft. He's in a big quarterback competition in Denver with Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham. Still unknown who's going to start for Denver week one. Well, Bo Nix was asked at camp if he'd accept being the backup in his rookie season, and what a response he had. Well, I don't know if I have a choice on that one, uh, if I accept it or not. If I want to stick around, I better accept it. Um, but I also don't necessarily want to become complacent and say, you know what, it's my rookie year. I'm okay with with sitting back and hanging out and learning. They'll play me when I'm ready, and I'm going to do my best to, to get ready. What a yeah, it's not his call, but I think he'll start. I would be stunned if they started Zach Wilson. Well, now, Stidham has an edge. He was in the system last year with with uh, Peyton, knows, knows it a little okay. better. So let's be fair to both Sam Darnold and Zach Wilson. They're not as good as many perceived. But could I argue they didn't have the right coach? They didn't have the right offensive line. They didn't have the right environment. So Sam Darnold, by the way, now is starting for an offensive coach in a wonderfully gifted Viking offense. Now we can make our final conclusion. Kyle Shanahan liked him, and all of a sudden, isn't it interesting? Whereas two offensive coaches have really liked Sam Darnold. Shanahan and Kevin O'Connell, who we love. Sean Payton likes Zach Wilson. And so he moves closer to home. So I'm just saying, environment matters. I, I had this discussion with John Middlecoff, my buddy on my podcast. And I said this. If Jordan Love went to the Jaguars or went to Cleveland, he'd be a bust. Because he was not ready to play for two years. And in Green Bay, after three years of sitting with a great coach, he struggled in his first six starts. It is This league is overwhelmingly for quarterbacks situational. Now, if you're as good as Caleb Williams, maybe not. Or if you're as good as Josh Allen or Andrew Luck. but I would, Or, or, or maybe Mahomes. But I would argue that for most talented quarterbacks, first-round quarterbacks, it's situational. You don't think... You don't think Lamar Jackson has benefited from that staff, that owner, that team, and that O-line and run game? So I, I, my take is Bo Nix got a break. J.J. McCarthy got a break. They got offensive coaches who will absolutely elevate quarterbacks with clear limitations. I would, I, Yeah, okay. I really want to talk about this because this is actually a, an interesting story because we've talked about the Denver Broncos a lot and Bo Nix a lot. And you all know that I'm super high on Bo Nix and think that he can have tremendous success. And I've also mapped out actually a couple months ago at this point, probably how I think it would be totally okay for him to sit. And I totally agree with Colin that like situation matters. And Bo Nix went to a perfect situation with Sean Payton. And I believe that he is the type of quarterback that Sean Payton once exactly like Sean Payton got the exact quarterback that he wants but I actually think that this is a more nuanced conversation in terms of Stidham and Zach Wilson and this idea that if another quarterback starts it just means that he's clearly better or that the other quarterback was clearly not good enough and I, I reject that notion in a lot of ways um, it's like if Bo Nix doesn't start his rookie year or start from the top it's not an indictment of like, I told you Bo Nix is not that good or see Sean Payton doesn't like Bo Nix or Sean Payton made a mistake in, in vouching for Bo Nix and, and what have you. I think that also what kind of Colin was saying about, say, Zach Wilson or even Sidham for that matter, that these quarterbacks are legitimate quarterbacks in the NFL, right? They're not Patrick Mahomes of the world, but they are legitimate quarterbacks. And obviously Zach Wilson coming from the Jets was in a very brutal situation being with the Jets, right? Offensively, they have no idea what they're doing. And so you have to imagine that with a Sean Payton, he's going to improve and be significantly better. We saw what happened when Nathaniel Hackett was the head coach of the Denver Broncos, um, Russell Wilson looked like a disaster. Sean Payton came in and immediately made that offense and Sean Payton uh, and Russell Wilson um, viable, like a legitimate offense, a legitimate NFL offense. When before it was like, what the heck am I watching? So Sean Payton is going to have that effect on Zach Wilson, you know? And, and so I think that, of course, someone like Zach Wilson will have a leg up because he's been in the NFL for years now at this point. He's actually played multiple NFL games, right, for multiple seasons with different coaches in New York. Like He's been around the block. He is an experienced quarterback, so he should have a leg up. 
but that doesn't mean that Bo Nix is still not the future. I think what Sean Payne ultimately wants to do right now is win. He He's not down to play games. He does not want to lose. I mean, like last season with Russell Wilson, he was desperately trying to get into the playoffs. And it's not like anyone, and you could be the biggest Denver Broncos fan, and I don't think, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, isolate too many fans here, but it's like, you don't, I don't think you thought you were going to win a Super Bowl last year, right? Or really make much noise in the playoffs. And so, and yet he was still trying to get there because it's all about winning for Sean. There, there is no like, oh, it's okay if we lose for the next couple of years to build a team. Like, no, 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 no. He wants to win now. And so it's not hard to imagine that no matter how high you are on Bo Nix, that at least in the very beginning of the season or just this whole year and to begin with, that Zach Wilson or someone else puts you in that position to do that more quickly um, and to stabilize this franchise, to stabilize the offense, right? To, to just, to make them be relevant again, to matter, to build an actual identity. And then once you have this identity, once you have the weapons, once you have the play calling, once you have all of this in place, then bringing Bo Nix into that as he's been, been part of that identity but just on the side and now you're putting him in the front like it, it just can be an easier transition so i i think like i my 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 suspicion is is that people will see this or especially if he ends up not starting people because people are so anti-bo nicks and denver broncos to begin with and they're just going to use that to be especially like someone like nick Wright to be like i told you bo nicks it was a terrible draft pick sean payne has no idea what he's doing the broncos are a disaster zach wilson and i i, I feel that like, I, I know that's going to happen and the truth is is like just because if this ends up unfolding as it may that doesn't mean that those guys are right in the slightest bit like it, there's like there's just no evidence for me to suggest that and for me to see that and I see someone like a Bo Nix and I see that press conference and see what he says and I'm like that's such a perfect answer right I mean we've seen other quarterbacks have that question asked to them and just give awful weird overly confident um dismissive responses like just not and he's very much like he cracks a little bit of a joke he says like you know they'll play me when I'm ready like he's just very mature in that regard and that's exactly who sean payton wants as a quarterback right he is definitely like that more old school offensive mind where it's just like i need to have a relationship where it's very much like you know just it's got to be collaborative but also like understand that like i'm the one that's the conductor here right like no egos you know drew Brees had no ego there and that's why it, it worked so well tom brady didn't have an ego it worked with a with a tougher you know coach um, and so to me, we're, we're in this kind of transition period where we're kind of constantly looking at these various quarterbacks of what they can and can't do. And it's like, we have to look beyond just that. I was talking to someone in the comment section the, uh, the other day, and they were pretty much just like, they were referencing just Tom Brady and, um, Mahomes and cause they were saying like, Oh, someone like a Tua or some of these other quarterbacks can't do what they can do. And therefore, you know, they're, they're clearly just like average. And it's just like, what standard is that? It's like, if you're not literally two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, then you're just garbage and you're just trash. It's like, there's other elements to being a great quarterback, right? It's not only being able to do some of the things like Patrick Mahomes can do or Tom Brady, even though they had two completely different skill sets, but it's also maturity it's also situation it's also the relationship with the coach it's also being able to like follow actual directions that sounds so simple to say and so dumb and you don't ever hear them talk about this but think about when you were growing up whether you're coming from a place where you played sports very competitively or whether you have not you know had the fortune to be able to play sports at a high level and you're just you know your frame of reference is like school for instance it's like some people fundamentally cannot follow directions they struggle to follow directions they struggle to to listen to their teacher their coach whatever i played with players who were unbelievable talent who've gotten drafted and played at very high levels who could not follow directions they just could not do it and the truth is that's the same thing in the nfl we have plenty of players typically more uh, position players and quarterbacks but definitely still quarterbacks as well and they can't even just follow direction yes they can be great athletes yes they can ball out and still do great things but that's what stops them, their inability to actually process and learn and grow and understand what their coach is saying and actually do it holds them back. 
And to me, that is one of the biggest things that Bo Nix has going for him is that he should be able to learn and progress and grow and just do the fundamentals very, very, very well. And that's why I'm curious to see what Zach Wilson does because we don't really know if it seemed to me that Zach Wilson wasn't the type of player who could actually follow directions and do what needs to be done. But in his defense, I don't know if there was really the right coaches there to actually like for him to listen to in the first place. And it's just like that. That's kind of how, um, you know, someone like Zach Wilson's career can kind of unfold in that situation. So I think this is a really interesting storyline and a kind of like a more interesting spin in, in some of the other consistent Bo Nix, uh, Denver Broncos stories that have been coming out over the last like few months, during, you know, leading up to the draft and after the draft. It, it definitely does seem a lot of people are super anti Denver Broncos and Bo Nix, which is so fascinating to me because I had no idea until I was making these videos and I was like, wow, a lot of people are super anti uh, Denver and, 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 and especially Bo Nix. Like so many people think that Bo Nix is just trash, overrated, not good. They just want to keep talking about his, you know, first years in, in, in college. And it's like, oh my God, I could care less what someone was doing when they were 20 years old. It's like, it's meaningless to me, like truly meaningless. So um, I'm just really excited to see how this finally plays out and it's going to be funny to see the narrative and, and how people try to spin it because uh, i could totally see them just running with this and just saying see bo nix is clearly not ready and even bo nick i could see nick wright being like see even bo nix knows that he's not ready and not good enough and like you know it's just it's just gonna be interesting to see what people have to say but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think um do you think bo nix should start even if he may not be the best option just because he's the youngest and still needs to be developed or do you think it'll be good for him to kind of sit back let someone like a zach wilson or someone else who's actually has already like nfl experience kind of take over and then kind of insert him later let me know in the comments below i read every single comment so whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.